Ozark Highlands Radio is brought to you by the Ozark Folk Center State Park in Mountain View, Arkansas. A wonderful way to enjoy yesterday. On the web at ozarkfolkcenter.com. And by Stone Bank, a community bank supporting entrepreneurs and farmers nationwide with loans guaranteed by the USDA, SBA, and Farm Services Agency. Learn more at stonebank.com. And the Arkansas Arts Council, empowering the arts for the benefit of all Arkansans. On the web at arkansasarts.org. Hey everybody, this is Dave Smith, host of Ozark Highlands Radio. Welcome to our show. On this week's show, we'll be listening to some new music by an old-time string band based in Eureka Springs, Arkansas, with the somewhat unusual name, Sad Daddy. We'll feature music and interviews with these interesting and innovative songwriters, plus a trip down into the vault to hear what Mark Jones has picked out for us this week. And our friend Charlie Sandage will continue his story about America's first national river. All that and more this week on Ozark Highlands Radio. Sad Daddy began as the meeting of three musical minds. Guitarist Brian Martin, bassist Melissa Carper, and banjo player Joe Sundell. The dynamic songwriting of the original three members carried the group's 2010 self-titled release and won them a loyal following in and around Arkansas. Here they are on the stage at the Ozark Folk Center in Mountain View, Arkansas. Well, took a new girl to the burger joint. I said, pick out anything that you want. West turned to me and said, to my surprise, I don't eat puny burgers and the cold french fries. Took that girl to the hot dog stand, slapped a big piece of meat and a little bit of ham. Gave me the locally woman can. I said, boy, I think it's time that you understand. I want cornbread, macaroni and cheese, barbecue chicken and purple oak peas, mashed potato gravy and some down and greens. Well, Cookie, baby, I ain't eating no more. Well, I took that girl a box of chocolates. Kind of get to every girl, so likes to get a set of fudge filled camel top of your sweet lips. Just said, boy, they're gonna go straight to my hips. Took that girl to the grocery store and got what your mama make plenty more. She powdered then shouted, boy, can't you see? It ain't same unless mama cooks special for me. She got cornbread, macaroni, and cheese, barbecue. Baby, here we go now. Cause you can't touch me, she got Cornbread, macaroni, and cheese Barbecue chicken and purple old peas Mashed potato gravy and some down and green She got fried catfish and some onion rings Potato salad, pork chop, baby, baked beans Peace, peace, cobble, and a bowl of ice cream We're Gonna wash it on down With a sweet iced tea And if she don't want it And if she really don't want it, that's some more for me. I guess I'm gonna have to answer that one. Um, I have this backwoods redneck friend from southern Arkansas and his when he sees a big fish or a big snake or just some big creature in the wild he'd always call it a sad daddy so I liked the way he said it I liked his slang I was like well that, that rolls off the tongue really nice and he just said boy that's a big old sad daddy <laughs> and um, I was like well you know it just brings joy to your heart when you hear it so I figured we'll 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 uh 
we'll make a band name out of that. And, and these guys fell for it. They bought it, and um, oh. we've been doing it ever since. I got a vision, Buddha, to stand next to you, babe, because I want you bad. I think original. Well, I, I, I think Thank you. me and Joe had played some. We'd played some shows together with our bands at the time, and so we knew who we knew each other. And I, I knew Melissa through some people she played with. So I knew these guys, and I think if I remember correctly, we sort of they were all here at the time, and we started the band, and then they all moved away. What and, what happened? Actually, I I the fir after the first winter I spent in Austin. I wanted to come back to Arkansas for the summer. And so I set up some gigs with okay. with you. And then we'd, we'd, uh, we'd, we sort of formed the trio before we even had a, a band yeah. or any gig. And before, we, we didn't, we had never played together and we recorded a CD together. Yeah, we practiced. I think we, we got <laughs> together literally and we decided to let's do this. And we practiced for two days and we made that CD. What was the first? sort of jam session like it was like love at first sight it was, it was, <laughs> see, it was, was it easy I, I, I think it was pretty easy i mean the the instruments went together and the the styles kind of went together pretty naturally i would say yeah. it, did you all have common songs real like hey let's try this i remember i showed brian a song i had written and what was funny was that he'd actually written the same song so it, it just, it, it, yeah. it was kind of seamless, you know? <laughs> Oh, but then I 
tells me I just can't wait that long Well, big river Won't you take me home tonight I wanna see that gal that I love so well We're gonna set our troubles right Yeah, big river Our time has come to part You know I love you well But you still can't have my heart <laughs> yeah. we, we've been divorced a couple of times. And we get back yeah. together. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is actually our third marriage. Yeah. Uh, but I, no, I, th I think Sad Daddy's a great band to play with because, um, yeah, we've all had enough experience, enough life experience, and enough, uh, you know, band experience to kind of know that I think we're we're lucky in that we don't have to really. Um, we don't have to really work that hard for our sound. I mean, I know that sounds bad, but it's kind of like we all just kind of do what we do, and it and it it seems to work out pretty well. And uh, there's not a lot of personality conflict. You know, everybody's pretty pretty laid back, pretty pretty uh, easy to get along with most of the time. So it just kind of works out. <laughs>
You've been listening to original songs performed by the Eureka Springs, Arkansas band, Sad Daddy. We heard Mama Don't Cook It, Zen Buddha, Big River, Arkansas Plates, and Ramblin' Mind. After this short break, I'm going to head down to the vault for a visit with our guru of old-time music, Mark Jones. This is Ozark Highlands Radio. Welcome back to Ozark Highlands Radio. It's come to that time of the week where I like to go down into the vault and visit Mark Jones, the the man who's in charge of taking care of and keeping track of the many, many recordings we've made here at the Ozark Folk Center over the years. So let's go down and see him now. Hey, Mark, what's going on down here? Oh, Dave, not much. I'm (laughs) just walking around looking at all this stuff. There's a lot of stuff here. There is. And I've run across an old feller that used to play a lot. In fact, he traveled many trips with Jimmy, and he went to the Smithsonian with him and just all over the country with Jimmy Driftwood, and he played banjo. I bet you know him. Who's that? 
Book Miller Shannon. Ah, Book Miller. I remember him very well. You know, I never saw Book Miller that he wasn't wearing bib overalls. He was really one of the last of the real neat old timers that we had around here. He lived at Timbo, Arkansas, and he was just a farmer like all the rest of the people around here. He had ran some cattle and liked to hunt coons and played a little banjo on the side. Now, Dave, I think he played a lot of banjo on the side. <laughs> it sure sounds good. And uh, he always played for dances around here. And so uh, I'd love for you to hear this. Maybe me and you both can learn a banjo lick or two. I don't doubt it. He taught a lot of people. In fact, he taught Judy Clementson, later Clinkhammer, who was a banjo icon around here, and he's the one who really taught her her licks on the banjo. That's true. What what song have you got for us? We've got Shortening Bread. Okay, let's let's listen to it. So that was Book Miller Shannon playing Shortening Bread. What what was all that racket that came in partway through the tune? Well, now I told you he played for a lot of dances, and that's people having fun dancing to his music, which he did it many nights and had a lot of people. I bet there's a lot of people that's danced to Book Miller Shannon's banjo. I'll bet so. Well, Book Miller's passed on, but I'm really glad we've still got his music in the archives. Me too. Okay, thanks a lot, Mark. See you next week. When the group Sad Daddy first got started, Melissa Carper and Joe Sundell both resided in Austin, Texas, and Brian Martin was here in the Ozarks. So the group's opportunities for collaboration and performance were few and far between. Now with the original members all back in Arkansas, as well as the addition of standout fiddler Rebecca Patek, Sad Daddy is embarking on the next chapter of their musical journey. Let's listen to another set of their fine original song. Keep shining on my heart is blue, my love is gone When will she return? Please may it be soon I can saw moon And I can saw moon shine down on me Here where I stand, it's too dark to see Where has she gone? She left too soon I can saw moon By the starlight I have seen you dancing there Above the clouds tonight Hear my last prayer That one of these days Come back to me We'll be in love again You'll see Where has she gone? She left too soon I can so moon
rockin' some moon keep shining on My heart is blue, my love is gone When will she return? Please may it be soon I can tell moon And I can tell moon shine down on me Here where I stand, still got to see Where has she gone? She left too soon I can tell moon Yes, by the starlight You know what? It doesn't feel like it's changed that much to me. Uh, I, I always look forward to coming and playing. I, you know, I, most of the bands I've played in, we play old time music or old country music anyway, so we sort of fit in here. So I, I enjoy coming here and and being in my element here. And uh, um, let's see, I played here also with the Carper family. And I think we were here two years ago and maybe also four years ago. And uh, and now I've, I've, we were actually out of Austin, Texas, and now I've moved back to Arkansas. And Sad Daddy is an Arkansas based band. Although Rebecca was in Austin, Texas also, and Joe was living down there too. So that's kind of how we all ended up playing together. It's a complicated story. But... The stars are light for you and I. Tonight, my love is ours in time. A golden moon is shining in the east.
Um, I don't really, I guess I don't think about it as a style. I think, you know, you think countries all over the world have their own version of folk music that has nothing to do with a, mm -hmm. a political agenda. And I think it's really just the story of people, at, you know, whatever their culture is, it's just their story without, take the opposite of what pop music is and you got folk music. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all, I mean, we all, I'm sure we all had a, just a database of songs we've written and, and we all just bring, here's what I have, here's what I have, and it's, you know, learn your part and go, so. Yeah, and I imagine too, you know, if you've written songs, you know, as a songwriter, there were probably some tunes that you had that, uh, you know, may have been on the back burner. And then Definitely. you get in a group like this and you're like, man, you know what, this, I, I think I can pull this one out yeah, of my back absolutely. pocket now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's just so nice being in a band with uh, some other, uh, you know, really good songwriters. It's it's inspiring, and it, it makes you want to want to you know write more and and uh, practice, which I do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> practice, what is that?
Four more fine songs from the Arkansas modern folk minstrel group, Sad Daddy. In that set, they played Arkansas Moon, On This Magic Night, House in the Sky, and American Dream. When we come back, Charlie Sandage celebrates the Buffalo National River. You're listening to Ozark Highlands Radio. Welcome back to Ozark Highlands Radio. Author, folklorist, and songwriter Charlie Sandage continues our celebration of 50 years of the Buffalo National River. Here's Charlie. Understand it if you can We all hold her in our hands The Buffalo, Buffalo Throughout our series celebrating the 50th anniversary of the creation of a national park in the Arkansas Ozarks called the Buffalo National River, we've talked about what Mother Nature and the BNR staff and volunteers have put into place for the convenience of visitors like us. Let's talk a bit now about what we might owe the river and its parks. No, no, admission is free, but what we owe is some taking care. Ranger interpreter Lauren May. The interpretation division of the National Park Service, and specifically here at Buffalo National River, our purpose is to help people maximize their experience at the Buffalo by learning about what makes this place so special. So whether that is doing a guided tour of a historic structure like the Boxley Grist Mill or the Rush 
um, historic mining district, or maybe that means leading a guided hike or a guided paddling trip and pointing out native species to people that maybe they, they've never learned about before. That is how our interpretation division can help build stewardship among visitors who are generally just here for recreation, just to have fun in the outdoors with their friends and family. If we can go that one step further and help them learn why this place is protected and why we need their help to continue preserving and protecting it, that's going to build up the next generation of park stewards. It turns out that Buffalo National River is one of a handful of national parks holding an important distinction within the system. In June of 2020, Buffalo National River was designated as one of only 12 Leave No Trace Gold Standard sites in the United States. And we're really proud of that designation, but just because the designation happened doesn't mean we have to stop all of our Leave No Trace efforts in the park. What we're asking visitors to do when they come to the Buffalo is to practice leave no trace. And what that means is minimizing to the best of our ability the impacts that we leave behind on our public lands. Because, you know, we're having 1.5 million or more people coming to this park every single year. And if that number continues to rise and more people learn about the park and it becomes more popular, if we're not practicing leave no trace, the impacts that we leave behind are going to increase with our visitation. The leave no trace idea is broken down into seven principles. Number one is to plan ahead and prepare. That is absolutely the most important thing that you can do before you arrive at the park is have a basic idea of what you're going to do, what types of gear and equipment and knowledge you need to have in order to do that activity safely. The second principle of Leave No Trace is to travel and camp on durable surfaces. This means use the existing roads, the existing trails, and the existing campsites. Those are durable, resistant surfaces that have been built for the purpose of withstanding impact. And so if we're veering off of those surfaces, we're creating unnecessary impacts and probably affecting plant communities. We're impacting wildlife habitat, wildlife behavior. And so anytime we can, we need to stick to those established trails, roads, and other surfaces. Principle number three might require some special pre-planning. It says simply, if you bring it in, pack it out. You may be somewhere that has disposal facilities for all kinds of waste. Fine, use them. If not, the pooper scooper rule applies to yourself as well as to your dog. The fourth principle is really just the opposite idea. Leave what you find. We have all sorts of archeological and just culturally significant artifacts and remnants that you may come across when you're exploring the Buffalo River. And to preserve the story behind those artifacts, we ask visitors to leave them in place. Do not disturb them. You can absolutely take a photograph. Um, you can kneel down and get right up close to whatever you find and just take it all in. That, that sense of discovery is incredible. And that's a big part of the experience of coming to the Buffalo. But please, please, please leave those things in their place um, so that that sense of discovery is possible for the next person that comes in behind you. Number five is one possibly the most of us might think about first on our own. Be careful about making fires. Even in designated sites, fires are dangerous if they're not well managed and not put thoroughly out. An ember left behind can suddenly turn deadly to forest, to animals, and to people. Maybe if you're just gathered up to visit or make music or tell those tall tales, you really don't need a fire at all. The next one, number six, ought to be a no-brainer. Wildlife is wild. Give them space. That's a cute squirrel. Don't try to feed it. That elk is magnificent. Keep your distance. Stay in or near your properly parked car to get that snapshot. It might be a good idea well before the unlikelihood that you spot a black bear to have asked a ranger what to do. The final principle is the old-fashioned golden rule. Principle seven 
of Leave No Trace is to be considerate of other visitors. We just have to remember when we're out on the Buffalo that people come to this park for a lot of different reasons. They're here for different experiences. And so what we can do each time we visit is to consider how our behaviors might affect the experience of somebody else who's just downriver or just up the trail or in a neighboring campsite. As ranger interpreter Kevin Middleton says, the rules are there for a reason. We don't like to constantly talk about some of them, but you have to just to keep people safe. You know, going back to being on the trail, that's going to be the safest way. Um, you know, don't know what may be off trail, and if you're not experienced, uh, you may not want to want to be there. Uh, same thing on the river. You know, we can help you learn how to paddle down the river, take care of yourself on the river, wear your life jacket, that kind of thing. So that's another big part of, of what we do as, as rangers is to educate people so they will not have a greater impact as they visit the river and enjoy the resources of the river. On a larger scale, both in terms of the river's surrounding environment and the arena in which crucial decisions are made, Government entities are called upon to be aware of anything that affects the entire watershed of the Buffalo. After one recent controversy involving a permit for an industrial-scale livestock operation along a feeder creek, Ed Alexander, who is featured in another of our segments in this series, made this observation about the need for vigilance. I would hope that there would be at least moves to protect the watershed. It's a very narrow watershed. There are a lot of very small streams that contribute to the, to the buffalo itself. So I think it takes a realization that my father once said, it's never over. It, it, you know, we've signed this wonderful bill and we've created this national river, but the fight will go on forever. The buffalo Buffalo Flowing through the shoals and bluffs of heaven, heaven knows She's ours to keep or just let go Will our children's children want to go Down the buffalo Thanks, Charlie. While the Eureka Springs Band's sad daddy's musicianship and stagecraft are worthy of mention, the songwriting of Martin, Carper, and Sundell remains the cornerstone of the group's allure and allows them to connect with a wide range of audiences. Here are a couple more interesting songs from Sad Daddy. For, for me, I kind of, I feel like as long as we all live in the same state, we could keep doing this forever. Like there's no, nobody, it, we all, we're, we're not after some huge goal of success in the music business. It feels like we're just doing it for the enjoyment of music. Mama told me when I was younger, boy, find a woman you can call your friend. Don't you go chasing after those ornaments. So when the glitter wears off, you'll be feeling all alone. came my way More and more I see what my mama meant Cause I can't find a single one that I want to stay Well all your good luck and sweet talk when won't you leave my mind Cause you're too 
hard to please And all you do is fuss and whine I need a big bone but ugly woman by my side One to love me so true And give me that warm peach pie Well I had enough chasing fluff So I went and I changed Change my thinking and I change my day. Well, I wrote me off a mail seeking female personal page. I sent it to the local newspaper. Here's a highway raid. Well, all your good luck and sweet talk and women need not apply. Cause you're too hard to please. And all you do is fuss and whine Ladies and gentlemen, wait just one second. She can't be any regular old big boner butt ugly woman. She's got to have a few prerequisites. Would you like to know what they might be? Yeah. Wow, they're ready right off the bat. I don't even have to coax it out of them. I'll tell you then. She's got to have 15 tattoos, 14 crooked teeth, 13 cavities, 12 convicted felonies, 11 jelly rolls. Ways to make a man cry. Nine fingers, eight toes, seven big hairy moles, six knees, five feet, four start bullet holes, three chins, two pairs of nipples, and a googly eye. Fifteen tattoos, fourteen crooked teeth, thirteen cavities, twelve convicted felonies, eleven to the rolls, and ten ways to make a man cry. Nine fingers, eight toes, seven big. Thank you. 
I hope you've enjoyed listening to this week's featured group, the Eureka Springs, Arkansas-based band, Sad Daddy. They just played their original songs, I Don't Care Anymore, and one titled, and I'm not making this up, Big Boned and Butt Ugly. Thanks for listening to our show. I'm Dave Smith. Have a great week. Ozark Highlands Radio is produced by Jeff Glover. Executive producer is Darren Dorton. Additional support for this program comes from Arkansas State Parks, a division of the Arkansas Department of Parks, Heritage, and Tourism, with 52 unique reasons to visit the natural state. On the web at ArkansasStateParks.com. The Committee of 100 proudly supporting the Ozark Folk Center State Park since 1974. And by Stone Bank with roots in Mountain View, Arkansas. Stone Bank is a proud supporter of heritage musicians and small towns across America with government guaranteed loans for farmers, entrepreneurs, and communities. More information available at StoneBank.com. For information on upcoming shows and events, we are on the web at OzarkHighlandsRadio.com. Until next time, I'm Donna Farrar. Mm-hmm.